tried to cover some very kind of large topics, some big estate planning topics, we've talked about mass health, we've talked about a bunch of things, but we've also tried to talk about, on occasion, some specific things. And today is one of those. It's kind of a specific kind of option uh, that some people don't consider, uh, and it's assisted living. We're going to talk about assisted living, and we're specifically going to talk about it uh, as it relates to the veterans' benefit that you may or may not be eligible for and may or may not be aware of. And the reason why I, I mention that is that um, lots of people, their first re um, reaction to assisted living is it's just too expensive. I mean, it's so expensive per month compared to what my income is, I really can't afford it. Um, but as a result of the, this particular uh, veteran's benefit, the aid and attendance veteran's benefit, uh, a lot of people can't afford it. Uh, and that's why I was talking to uh, the person that I do a lot of the veterans work with, a woman named Patty Surveys, who I consider to be really the kind of the great expert in this area. Um, and she told me that um, she does some stuff here and also nationally. And she said that, that um, nationally, uh, her information is that something like 80% of all of the rooms in assisted living facilities are occupied by people who are taking advantage of the veterans benefit. Right? It's a huge, huge thing nationally. So, we're going to talk about my couple, my, my friends Frank and Mary. You've heard about them before. This is the same couple that we're always kind of talking about. Sometimes their situations vary. Today, um, their situation is about what it usually is. They've got assets worth about $400,000. Uh, he has an IRA worth $150,000. Uh, they have an annuity worth $100,000. And they've got bank accounts worth seventy five. dollars so they're not rich, they're not poor. They've got to a total assets of about $725,000. He has monthly income of $2,500. He's getting a, a substantial social security check of 2,000. And he's getting a pension of 500. She has income of $1,000 a month. They both have the same uh, basic goals. Uh, they wanna uh, die and be buried in the backyard. If one of them dies, they wanna leave everything to the other. And when they both die, they're hoping that their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. will have something left. But if they don't, they don't. Because they made this money and they're gonna spend this money and they wanna make sure their basic goal is that they don't run out of money before they die. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can I just ask you one question? Um, somebody just left their thought this was just on veterans benefits? It's, it, we're, focus, we're focusing on assisted living and on the point of assisted living and, and the reason why you might want to consider it. Although we are talking about the veterans aid and attendance benefit as it affects as it affects. But well, you're talking assisted about living. assisted living in general? That's right. That's right. And that's why we have the executive director of Christopher Heights who's specifically okay. going to be talking about okay, assisted living. You're just talking about just for veterans. I understand. Okay, I just wanted to put some down. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah we, tried, we tried to make that one. We tried to make that one clear. So, um, Mary's goal uh, in the short run, though, is that she for sure does not want to ever go to a nursing home. And many people assume that a nursing home and assisted living are really the same things, which they're not. Uh, 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 nursing homes um, are, are what the name suggests. They are skilled nursing facilities, and they are so defined because there are nurses there all the time. And you are there, typically, because you need skilled nursing all the time. Assisted living is really for a, a whole set of folks who really want to stay independent. And because I know, once again, Frank and Mary really do want to die and be buried in the backyard. But there is a point where, or there may be a point where Frank and Mary cannot really be at home feeling really comfortable and feeling really safe. So they want to maintain the independence of being, you know, not living with their kids. Right? And of not living necessarily, certainly not living in a really densely populated apartment complex that's, you know, but 
At the same time, they'd like to be able to know that, that if there are things that they can no longer do or don't feel like it, like making the meals every day or making the bed if they don't feel like it, or if they are concerned that in an emergency they want somebody close, that they don't want necessarily to be you know, pulling the lifeline and having the, you know, the ambulance show up and the cruiser and the fire chief, that maybe they want, they want to have somebody closer and nearby then really assisted living is a good alternative. So um, we, we've asked, um, is it Denise Jones? Denise Jones from Christopher Heights over in Marlboro, uh, which is one of the two assisted living facilities in Marlboro to talk about this, to talk about who their typical person is uh, who comes to, to uh, live there. And, and oh, we're not, we're not we, but I didn't invite you to speak today. <laughs> but we may be wanting you to have, make comments later on. Um, so, so that I wanted her to talk about it. I'm not trying to sell Christopher Heist. Remember, everything that she says may be a lie. I don't know, you know. So, but, but the goal of this is to really have you understand what assisted living is, uh, what the possibilities are for assisted living, how the price structure usually works, to get a sense of what assisted living usually costs, and then I'm going to talk about the veteran's benefit as it may affect you to the extent if you are a veteran or the widow of the spouse of a veteran, or the widow of a veteran, um, then that benefit could really affect your ability, as it would affect Frank and Mary's ability, to get into um, to, to finance assisted living. The one thing I do want to re mention, though, at the beginning, is once again, I deal with, I'm in, I do elder law, so I deal with a lot of folks who are older, and many of whom are thinking about this, and the one big surprise to people who go to an assisted living facility is that is that all of their other bills go way down? I mean, not surprisingly, you know, their food their food bill goes goes away. Not doesn't go away, but it goes way down. Transportation, a lot of other costs go way down. So when you're looking at the cost of assisted living, you really have to kind of factor that in. That what you're paying when you're in your house is not just the insurance and the taxes. There are a lot of other things about living in your house, and those numbers really change a lot when you're in assisted living. So. Uh, I'd like to introduce Denise and thank her for coming over and ask her to explain to you how assisted living works, who the typical folks are who are there, and kind of what the plus, pluses and minuses are. Now, I, during her presentation, I may ask a question. I get to do this on the presenter, right? I'd like to ask people to hold any of their, I'd like you to hold any of your questions until the end, until she, after she's gone through her stuff, and I've talked a little bit about the veteran's benefit. So, Denise Jones. Denise. Absolutely. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for inviting me today. I really appreciate the time to come out. I also want you to know I'm also a Southboro native. I live here. I love Southboro. It's a beautiful place. I also see one of my residents here that lives here at Christopher Heights. She's not a plant. Yeah, she's not a plant. But anyway, um, I've been the executive director of Christopher Heights in Marlboro for a year and a half. Prior to that, I worked with a home care agency, and I'm, I'm going to tell you this because I felt lucky because I would go into all the assisted livings and find out what brought people in. They told me personally, the families and the residents themselves. So when I explain this slide up here, I think the important piece I'm going to offer also is, is how that decision came. And by the way, as a low-tech person, I forgot to give her the clicker to move the slides along. Right. So there you go. Okay. On the right is the... Right. Oh. So generally, what happens is someone's at home and they're, they want to reach the backyard, like Arthur's speaking of. But things start changing. You, you slow down a little bit. You can't get to the stairs as easily. You're falling behind in the laundry. You can't get to the grocery store. These little things add up. Maybe you forgot to take your important cardiac medication at 9 o'clock at night, and that one dose can create a big problem. So usually the families might come and say, things aren't working as well at home, or the person that wants to move in will come in and say, it's time. I find that people that plan ahead and make that decision before an emergency happens transition the easiest into assisted living because you don't want to come in if you can help it or an accident that could have been prevented by coming in and looking early and thinking about how to stay safe. The things that we provide to help you with that, of course, is housing. So we really are your home. We really want to make you feel at home. All the assisted livings provide lots of activities. 
that supply interests and things that you may like to do. They, a lot of them have grounds outside that you can walk around, common areas that you can talk and socialize with other residents to come in to find common interests. So the housing, in addition to the housing is the built-in services for safety, night safety checks. Now, in a nursing home, the night safety checks, the lights are on all night, they're watching you, you're pretty much in your room. But in assisted living, you have your own private apartment. And maybe you want somebody to come in one time a night, maybe you want someone to come in three times a night, you can pick. Person's just gonna come in and make sure you're right where you need to be asleep and comfortable and safe. If you were home and you got up in the middle of the night and you fell on the floor in the middle, maybe nobody comes. Maybe they don't come for two days. Maybe they don't come for three days. Believe it or not, preventing little things like that can keep you independent and safe longer. <clears throat> Supportive services are the home companions that we have. Usually they're companions. They're certified nurse assistants or home health aides, either one. They're able to come in, they're licensed to come in and take care of you and know proper body mechanics and how to get you, maybe you need a little help in the shower with bathing. That's called activities of daily living. So bathing, showering, maybe just helping you get dressed with your sneakers you can't quite reach. Maybe a little assistance in ambulating down the hallway safely. Maybe somebody just stands outside the shower for you to make sure you don't fall. They don't have to go all the way in. Maybe you just want somebody outside in the shower. The activities of daily living is very important, and that's especially important for the veteran's benefit that you get when you get into assisted living. So that's that terminology for that self-care that you need, that help from the, the companions. The individualized service plan, that's a plan that you receive when you move in. So when you move in, the resident care manager, which is usually a nurse, she'll meet with you and usually a family member and talk about what kind of services you would like when you come in. Again, maybe you're just picking laundry, maybe you're picking just, you know, bathe my feet, wash my back, one safety night, check at night, and you keep it to a minimum initially. But over time, you could increase those services. So they're gonna put that individual service plan in place for you, and then they're gonna check on you at the first month, and then at six months, every six months thereafter, to see if there's something you wanna add or decrease. Sometimes, and I've seen this, a lot of our residents will come in and they improve. They, they're walking better because they're walking more. They're coming out of the apartments. Maybe they gain a little weight because they're eating better. They're sleeping better. I mean, the improvements that we see from being home alone to coming in are remarkable and they do happen. 